Last weekend, I visited a friend who lives in the north of Paris and we spent one day in the most wonderful castle which would enchant all fairy tales lovers, the beautiful and magical Château de Chantilly. This castle has all the ingredients one could expect from a real fairy tale castle, with its gardens, ponds, water, its huge forest, its tears, dogs turn into stone. its monkey's ornamental wall decors, its amazing library, its rooms where times have stopped and nobody even in our century is allowed to change the order of the decor or the paintings, and its dear gallery with flying hands holding some flambeau totally inspired by Madame Dolnois' white cat which have actually inspired Jean Cocteau for his film The Beauty and the Beast. A chateau where the visitor feels like a real guest of a fairy tale abode. The history of this castle is fascinating. Most of the castle has been destroyed during the French Revolution and was rebuilt patiently between 1875 and 1880. But the smaller part that still remains was built in 1557. His last owner was the Duc d'Aumale, the son of the last king of France, Louis Philippe, belonging to the Dorléans family. So many stories and important historical moments took place in this beautiful castle at Chantilly. Madame de Sévigné relates in one of her letter to her daughter dated April 26, 1672, the events about the famous Vatel who worked for Le Prince de Condé, who was the owner of Chantilly at the time and who killed himself with a sword thinking that the fishes he had ordered for the big banquet which would, was about to take place the next day would not arrive on time. And it didn't happen, the fishes all arrived on time. It was a pretty tragic end, but a film has been made about Vatel and this tragic end at Chantilly a few years ago. If you want to learn more about it, you could still see the film. I was so excited to discover this room, the monkey rooms, called La Grande Singerie, the large monkey room painted by Christophe Huet in 1737 and all covered with joyful monkeys. Here is a beautiful fire screen also painted by Christophe Huet, which represents a monkey schoolmaster whipping a bad cat student, which is really adorable and really, really charming. The different panels represent the five senses in a pure chinoiserie style, typical of the Rococo style with joyful and laughing monkeys and humans. And one can also see the four continents. There is no fairy tale castle without a big library with walls covered with leather-bound old books, an old wood fireplace and some comfortable chairs. Very convenient to read old heavy books. The library of Le Duc d'Aumal gathers 20,000 books and 1,500 manuscripts and is a little idea of the paradise for any book lover.
Le duc d'Aumale owned the rarest private and most precious library of the time at the end of the 19th century. And he owned the most precious and famous medieval manuscript, Les Très Riches Heures du Duc de Berry. There is also a second library which is not open to the public with 30,000 books also. In some of the rooms of this beautiful castle, time has stopped. Inside the castle, we can discover the Musée Condé, totally thought and organized by the Duc d'Aumale. To this day, the director of the museum is not allowed to change the disposition of the different paintings, even if he wants to. It is not allowed. The Duc d'Aumale, even from his grave, has forbidden it. I, of course, especially appreciate it to see the 18th century paintings by Watteau, Elisabeth Vigée Lebrun, and Napoleon, of course, and of course, a lot of masterpieces, which are all famous. There are only masterpieces in this collection and some paintings by Raphael and few others. The collection is pretty amazing. And when we visit these rooms, we can have the exact same experience than a visitor at the end of the 19th century. The Duc d'Aumal wanted the visitors to be surprised all along the visit. At Le Hameau, the hamlet, which was created before the one at Versailles, visitors can also taste the original and unique crème chantilly, the one which was invented in this very place, in this hamlet, in the park at Chantilly, around the years 1782. This crème is served here has nothing to do with any chantilly you have ever eaten or bought in the supermarket. It's entirely different. And the old recipe includes some raw extra fresh cream and they are preparing it there as it was back in the 18th century. This one was pretty compact and extremely tasty. Really, really tasty. I ate mine with a slice of apple tart and a glass of alcohol-free rhubarb cider and it was absolute heaven. It was so delicious. We were a little short in time, so we didn't explore the entire park, which is very, very large and includes beehives, a goose game, some kangaroos even, a labyrinth. But we saw the island of love, which was very poetic and very romantic. We ended our visit with the stables, which could have been the home of 220 horses. Today there are still horses, you can visit it. And there is also the Museum of Horses and some horses shows also uh, take place in these stables. Chanty was just a wonderful experience on so many levels and they had a beautiful gift shop. I always like gift shops in museums and in castles. And I came back with a few things. My friend offered to me this beautiful soap by La Savonnerie Royale, which is a company um, which is at Versailles, located at Versailles. And they make beautiful products and soaps and I think home things too, which all smell amazing, really, really good. And this one smells amazing. It is inspired by Napoleon, the Napoleonic era at least, which is also one of my favorite era. And I also came back with this book, Un jour à Chantilly. You can find it translated as A Day at Chantilly with I think the same box and the same organization. 
I could have ordered it online, of course, as you can do for a lot of things, but it's not the same thing to buy it when you are in the place, you are in Chantilly, after your day of visiting, when you have spent such a nice time in this beautiful, magical castle. It's not the same to, to buy it there. So I bought it there and I'm really, really happy I did it. I already have through it and it's just going to help me um, remember all these beautiful things I've seen, understand them better, um, prepare my next visit when I will go back to in this castle the next time because I will for sure go back there to see the rooms I didn't see. And the park is huge, it's really a big park and I only saw a tiny bit of it. And also maybe to see it at a different season because here the nature was still just slightly waking up, it was still a bit of winter landscape so it's going to be nice to see it. Uh, when everything is green and the flowers are blooming and all that. But the book is really beautiful and um, if you can't go to Chantilly for now, at least it would give you a little taste of it. There are so many things which are so special in this castle, really unique. The fact that no other castle museum can borrow things from there, any paintings, art, they can't do that. The Duc de Mal had said he never wanted anything to leave Chantilly. All his collection has to stay on the walls. It would, it would not permit it to, to be uh, borrowed even after his death. So to this day, they have to follow his will and to still do that. I find that pretty amazing. So this book, you can find it online if you want to. And I'm really pleased I have it. And they have um, other books in this collection too. And my friend offered me the book, which is specifically about the monkey rooms. So this one is about the two rooms in Chantilly, which, is, which are all focused on this ornamental Rococo deco, panel decos, featuring some monkeys. So I'm not going to tell you all the history of that, it's all in the book and it's super interesting. Uh, I really would like to see next time the rooms with the room with the woman uh, monkey aristocrats. Uh, they are all dressed with dresses, but they are monkeys and I think it's pretty, pretty fun that they Nobody was shocked by that. The aristocrats and the owner of the castle were not at all upset by that. And they are, yes, it's really, really fun, really beautiful, really inspiring too. I'm so inspired when, I, when I've left Chantilly, I was so, so inspired. So yes, it's totally magical and beautiful and really, really inspiring for those of us who love Rococo, the Baroque era and the mid 18th century era. And this book, you might find it online, I'm not really sure. I have the English version here because the French copy was not available anymore, but it's called The Monkey Rooms, the two rooms with the monkey decals at Chantilly. The next day we went to visit l'Abbaye de Royaumont on our way back from Chantilly in a completely different style And we also stopped at Le Château des Coins, a Renaissance museum and a Renaissance castle which was a source of inspiration for Le Duc d'Aumal when he rebuilt the destroyed parts of Chantilly. I also went to the Medieval Museum of Paris, Le Musée de Cluny, to see the beautiful series of tapestries, The Lady and the Unicorn, created in the 15th century. After actually I read a book this summer which was all about these tapestries and offered a different reading, a different vision of these characters and of the different scenes uh, represented in these tapestries.
And the book Les Floraisons Intérieures was the reason I went to see this museum, the medieval museum of Cluny, to see the beautiful tapestries of the lady and the unicorn. I have done many unicorns in my life, in my art, and right now I still have one in my entrance hall, which is the big unicorn from the fairy tale home decor workshop. And it is the first thing my visitors see when they come into my home, they see this big unicorn. And the unicorn is such a medieval magical creature. I read this book this summer, which is by Jacqueline Kellen, only available in French, not translated. Unfortunately, it's very well written, but it's just a different approach to the version that everybody repeats, which is that all the tapestry are the five senses. It's sort of agreed now between all the art historians, this is what it means, we can't go further, this is what this person has said it means, we can't uh, see anything else in these tapestries. And she completely uh, deconstruct that. She has published this book, I don't remember when, quite a few years ago, but she didn't totally agree with that. At least she said it's not the only thing we can see there. There are other things than that. There are other symbols. There are other keys you need to, uh, to have to understand all the symbols, the animals, the different vegetations, flow, flowers, plants, details on the costumes of the servants and the lady, of course the lady uh, in, her, in her island. It's very beautiful, very poetic. I totally enjoyed reading this book this last summer. And I wanted to see the, the tapestry for real. Once I had enjoyed the, the book so much this summer, I thought I need to go to visit the medieval museum and see these tapestries for good. So you can find this book online if you speak French or understand French. And if you like the lady and the unicorn, I would like to see something a bit different with a different approach. Uh, she doesn't go into the same direction than all the other art historians, it's different, but I think it's very refreshing. In this little shop, which sold all sorts of quills, inks, papers, notebooks, um, notepads, everything you can think of, which was pretty small but so beautiful in this beautiful passage. I don't remember the, the name of the passage, but I will put the address of the shop under the video if you want to go next time you come to Paris. And I just put the Italian, a little Italian set of writing paper with some envelopes and some sheets of paper. They had a lot of other things, also some made in France and made in Paris. I just wanted to try this also to see with my quill and my ink how it would work. and also a little bottle, a tiny bottle of violet ink, which has the scent of violet. So when you open the, this little jar, it smells violet, which means that when you write, as you are writing, you can smell this beautiful scent of violet. So it's a beautiful experience on every level. So this one, I'm going to, to offer it, but I'm going to buy some more of scented ink. I have the pink one which is uh, scented with rose, which is really beautiful, but I think the violet is really, really delicious. And it is by Herbin, which, who is the, one of the very good ink maker and seller and was on the market for many, many centuries. Uh, yes, it was just a tiny bottle. They had a lot of other choices of other inks too. And I will put the address of this shop just under this video. I wanted to visit the Cimetière du Père Lachaise for a long time, but I only stayed for this first time a couple of hours and couldn't find most of the graves I was looking for. 
I still saw the beautiful grave of this legendary couple from the 12th century, Eloise and Abelard. On the beautiful grave, who had such a tragic fate, and I was hunting for a lot of writers and artist graves that I couldn't find, I was still happy to find most of Napoleon's marshals who are buried in this cemetery. Um, I'm always interested in Napoleonic characters, of course, and it was a fun surprise to find most of them here, at least few of them. Masséna, Suchet, there was Murat's grave with his family. And before I leave you, I just wanted to tell you that the Dollhouse Workshop is about to reopen its doors on March 20. It's going to be open for one month, but of course, once and all, you keep access to the content and there will be a launching offer available for two weeks. So you will have all the information and details on my workshop's website at learnthemagicofpaper.com. If you are interested and if you would like to start a dollhouse with me, a big castle like this one with the furniture, the decor, everything inside. Or if you would like to start a rather smaller house because you also have the possibility to start something a little smaller if you are a little intimidated to start a big castle. And now I'm back on all my projects. I will give you some updates on all the things I'm working on right now after a few days of escapade in Paris. And I will leave you here for now. You can subscribe if you don't want to miss all the nice videos coming. You can find all the details and all the references and uh, information I gave you in this video under the video with the addresses and uh, titles of the books, things like that. And you can give a thumbs up if you appreciated what you saw. Thank you. I hope to see you very soon.